you are tuning in to the Capsule in Conversation podcast dedicated to women and their well-being. I'm Natalie Anderson and today I'm joined by women's health coach, author and founder of Owning Your Menopause, Kate Roham, to talk myth-busting menopause and exercise, reinvention and finding your power in midlife. So sit back, relax and get ready to join us in our conversation. Hello all, thank you so much for joining us today. I hope you've all had a great week as always. My lovely guest today is a certified women's health and fitness coach who's passionate about educating women on how to exercise and nourish their bodies during the transitional chapters of perimenopause and beyond. She's the founder of the hugely successful online platform Owning Your Menopause and the author of Owning Your Menopause, Fitter, Calmer, Stronger in 30 Days, a book that she's created to give women the tools they need to feel empowered on their menopause journey. It is my absolute pleasure to welcome her today. She's the fabulous Kate Roham. Hi, Kate. Hi there. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Thank you so much for being with me today. No, my pleasure. Thank you for having me. I always get really overwhelmed when I hear those introductions because I'm like, okay, oh my God, all of those things. But yeah, really exciting. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, it, and I know you're super busy. So thank you for fitting me in because I know you've got so <laughs> much silly. on. Um, no. But as I said in my introduction there, you're a qu- qualified women's health and fitness coach, but it wasn't always that way, was it? I mean, this is a, a kind of a new era for you, would you say? Yeah, completely. Um, so yeah, so I, I sort of had started this sort of next chapter, the third chapter, um, you know, over 40 qualifying as a as a PT. Um, so which I love, because I think having found, you know, everything that's happened over the last sort of eight years, sort of that transition through perimenopause, kind of starting again at, at 40 was really daunting. But it's possible. And that sort of fits in really nicely with my own experiences of perimenopause and then hopefully empowering and encouraging other women to do the same. Um, but no, essentially, I, um, I've i had other businesses, but I was a, a stay at home mum and struggling to um, sort of lose the weight from my third child and started doing workouts and they just didn't resonate with me. I just kind of, you know, I was stuck at home. Anyway, I was like, right, I want to empower other women who, like me, are stuck at home with small children to find a space to work out and build strength. But if I'm honest with you, at the time, um, for me, it was probably more of a weight thing because that's the way I'd always exercised. And I'm sure we'll come on to it. And then it was slowly over those years of navigating perimenopause that actually my absolutely everything changed um how I saw myself how to work out um and you know I I look at I I look at the world in a very different way and I look at my body in a very different way I mean like you said then it's you know you you've gone from kind of being like you say that the mum that stayed at home and working out for postpartum and then you get into that perimenopause (laughs) madness you know we've talked about it so much you came to our event you spoke at our event and this transition and this phase is so difficult and I'm so glad that obviously now we're having so many open conversations about it because you know generations before us really it wasn't discussed you know you go from having children and a lot of women are having children a lot later and then you're potentially bang straight into perimenopause and you're confronted with all of these different hormones a completely different body that's not reacting as you said to the exercise that you've always done so for you you know I know you've said it was a a lonely journey in the beginning for you kind of where was that crossover of right okay this is how fitness can empower me in this perimenopause journey yeah um I mean it was it was difficult and actually I was exactly that 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 woman as you say sort of having a child quite uh, later on in life and then I literally the perimenopause symptoms started probably when Rupert was around about six months um so you know I can resonate with a lot of women on that I think for me it was realizing that I didn't want to live I didn't want this to be the best that it got. I didn't want um, to live my life feeling like that. Like I've always been, you know, I lack confidence, but I've always been sort of bubbly and happy. Um, And I just felt like I was, I just felt invisible. And I just, I didn't want to be invisible. That's not who I am. Um, And I just wasn't, 
uh, I wasn't happy. And I think that when you're not happy, nobody else around you is happy, especially as women. We are the energy givers, I think, of all around us. You know, like if you've got a moody teenager that comes down, <laughs> you've got to be like, morning, you know, and try yeah. and jivvy everybody up or, you know, their stresses at the husband's work. And you are you've got to have that energy to, to, to empower or to sort of cheer up everybody else. And then you've got to have that for yourself. But if you haven't got that for yourself, everybody else loses their spark too. And so I think when I was sort of looking around me and I was thinking, God, wow, you know, we're all we're all suffering here. Like, how how can I how do I make this better? And sadly, you know, that conversation, how can I make it better? Because it was only up to me to make it better. Nobody else was going to come down and say, you know, cheer, cheer everybody up in the morning or or perhaps even even recognize that. So I think that for me was like that moment of uh, I need to do something about this. And I, I'm the only one that can. Um, and equally, I don't want to I really don't want to live like this for the next, you know, 30 years. We're all, we're all just branching away from each other. Yeah. And, you know, did, so when you st- your first symptoms started, kind of did you go to a doctor straight away? Because, again, like I say, it's only more recently that we started having these conversations. You know, when we did the event together last year, the amount of women that said, I was given antidepressants, you know, I didn't even know what my symptoms, I didn't even know what I was going through. I thought it was stress. For you, did you have any idea or was, or was it a conversation with the doctor that said, this is where you're at? No, I had no idea. Um, and actually, do you know, that's the thing that really terrifies me. Like this will make you slightly chuckle. I remember having my first born child and I do the research, like I am the worst person at Dr. Google. Um, but I remember having my, my first son and I'd had a cesarean. And actually, at one point, the doctor, because I was in there for a while, said, are you medical? You know, because I, I knew kind of like so much about what I was <laughs> on. I was like, no, I'm not. Um, actually, my husband and I laugh about that so much now. And that that's why I think the whole perimenopause thing really shocked me, because I was a fitness instructor. I had the qualification, but I had no idea what it was. And actually, that is even more terrifying, because you know, I think when you do your your level three instruction, you learn about what exercise to do after the age of 60 there's nothing specifically on what's going on with women much like you know the NHS and and doctors training so you know that that in itself is really scary um so no so I I had absolutely no idea and I was doing all the training that I had always done but sort of masking women were very good at masking masking my aches and my pains um and just yeah just really kind of retracted from everything and I knew it wasn't right I just I knew it wasn't right I didn't know what it was um and I ran my GP we'd just gone into lockdown so sadly I never got a face-to-face um which I think made it harder for them so I, I don't blame them but harder for me too because the conversations I was then having with some male doctor in tears going I actually don't want to live like this they were like well it must be depression because you know and I said no I don't I don't want it you know I don't want to take my own life that's not what I want I just don't want to live feeling like this there's got to be something to help me um and and that was it it was just complete dead end and I couldn't go in and see anybody so I did reach out privately to doctor because I was able to I did get that diagnosis however I still even at that point when my HRT arrived I looked at it for like three months going is it is it really is it is it because I was only 41 you know and um so many people said you're too that's too young but um for maybe 42 anyway um I looked at it for three months I did start taking it but it wasn't the silver bullet magic fix that I think so many women are hoping for and so that's when I really set about doing what I do now which is okay I've t- I've gone down that route but how how do I now how do I now just really change this I've taken that first um leap of acceptance that this is perimenopause because I think that is a route for some women I think you know there there has been such a taboo around it that I say acceptance whereas actually now I'm just like bring it on like menopause for me has been my biggest like transformation but um you know I think when you're in it in that moment it can be quite daunting. So and I was like, right, how am I going to really, how am I really going to thrive? How do I get me back? It is terrifying, isn't it? Because it's like stepping through a door. It's like, I don't want to leave this behind. Like this is, this is youth. And this is, well, what we associate with youth. This is this. And if I go through this door, that, that 
chapter is gone but that is so not a bad thing and it's because we've not had the role models you know ahead of us we were laughing because we were talking about the golden girls that you know that clip of the golden girls and like this is women in their 50s and 60s yes. and I'm like this is not like us <laughs> you know, you know, they all look with their like hair nets and everything else and it's just that those were the role models and it's not yeah. the way that we work and you know even for my mum who's just turned 60 she's so dynamic and you know she's working on the counter still and she's fast and she's like oh I'm not giving up work you know and the, this is what sadly the generation ahead of us didn't have and that's why I think like you said before that kind of I'm 41 42 and stepping through that door can be quite scary but the more we normalize that conversation and the more as you you know have created this incredible brand owning your menopause you know it's like it's yours and it doesn't have to be this terrifying scary thing yes it can be difficult and challenging but together if we talk about it just like you know pregnancy can be terrifying and scary but we've all got you know we're lucky that we've built communities within that space yeah and I was going to say it's funny because actually I do compare like those two life stages because I think we um you know if we choose to have children and we have children um then I think that for a certain amount of time after that, I know certainly in my own story, again, I was very detached from my family because I've got a baby. No one comes with it. It doesn't come with a manual. doesn't come with a guidebook. No one knows what you're doing. And then perhaps just as you're coming out of that sort of phase of I'm almost back and putting yourself back and feeling visible again, you know, you you might have a couple of years, but then menopause, like you say, can hit again. And and it's that same sort of cyclical thing where you lose that invisibility. And then that's what I want women to know is that they were a force to come back from where they did after having kids if they did feel invisible and they can do it again. That, you know, it, they've done it once, they can do it again because that support is there now. And we are having those conversations. And like what you're saying about, you know, going through that door and not knowing what is there, we need to allow every woman to know that, we're, like to not even open that door to be scared, like, kick the door down kick the door down like, yeah kick the, kick the door down <laughs> and get into that next phase and that is how I think I hope you know that the next generation will feel and I I know having these conversations um you know my daughter's only 14 and and so so you know I I'm aware that I don't ever want her to feel sort of anxious about this next stage from the things that can happen but I don't think she ever will because I think she will feel truly um empowered and excited because she has seen me go for she saw me go through what I went through um, and come out the other side. So even if she did have a lot, I think she knows that there's always going to be hope. And I think that that is the message. And that's important because, but equally, you know, for the people blazing the trail and being the guinea pigs, it is scary because like you say, you can't be, optimistic and positive all the time because yeah. you are still navigating the symptoms <laughs> and the journey and you know it's like but you're owning your menopause so you should be happy and you know like yeah. you like but actually that's not the reality all the time isn't it? and I think you're very real with that yeah. on your social media <laughs> you know you kind of you do let people in how has it been kind of navigating the social media space because that's relatively new for you as well isn't it yeah that's been terrifying um it's funny isn't it because I I think when I started I definitely got you definitely get caught up in you know likes and numbers and da, 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 da. but as I think I've shared more and I've not worried about that I've allowed myself to be more vulnerable because I'm just putting out there what I feel resonates and helps with women and also I don't actually know how it all works if I'm really totally honest with you you know I've got no idea about how to crack the algorithms I've got no, no, no idea. When people say to me, so if you could just tidy up your page, and if I've worked with a couple of brands or people that want to sort of help, they've gone, you know, your page is a bit messy. And I'm like, yeah, that sadly, I have ADHD. So my brain is messy. And if I have a message that I want to share, I'm going to share it. I'm not going to wait till Monday or Tuesday and, and plan it. I don't have the time to plan it. So so that for me, I think, has has, has been the thing in trying to, to do the things that you're meant to do. I don't I don't use it for that. I literally use it as a message to, to get out about earning your menopause. But it has been scary. My husband, my children um, don't like it. They don't like uh, social media. They obviously love TikTok and Snapchat, not my husband, but my kids. <laughs> um, and if I, I actually said to them the other day, this mail, I said, wants to help me this weekend maybe make a reel about my book you know let's do something and they they went they went no why do we want to do that and I went 
okay thanks like the only one that wants to help me is Rupert because he's like seven and um, he's just a real empath and he's really he's like he loves it he, he he thinks it's funny um he might not again when he's like 10 he'll probably change his mind inside he doesn't want to do it um but it has been hard um but again it's helped me send those messages like about comparison because I can get caught up and find myself going okay so so and so's got that and they've done that but equally remembering what I am doing in this space very much like you is really really unique and you know we are helping women and it doesn't matter um you know if we haven't got a following like that person or that person or you're not getting the light you help one person kind of that's that's all that really matters so you know there's an awful lot of reframing that goes on um but like you say if I'm having a bad day I'll I'll share it like it's it's not a bed of roses it re- it really isn't and um I often say if I didn't have to, if I didn't have to do Instagram, I like I, I wouldn't um, because I would love there to be another way to reach people. But there, there isn't. I mean, there is no that we're stuck. And this is the thing, though, in terms of like it is an incredible tool because you are so passionate about getting that message out and, you know, and, and you live and breathe it. And you can tell, you know, we've met, like I said, and you were so helpful for the women that came to our event and being so authentic and, you know, and being completely honest, like even from before when you were saying HRT for you wasn't, you know, the magic kind of spell. Everyone's like, oh, I'll take some HRT. You know, it didn't work like that for you. You obviously have, you know, continued down that road and but look at other things holistically as well. And, you know, that brings me then to kind of the Earning Your Menopause platform because it's such an incredible platform. I mean, there's so much information on there. Did you ever think for a start that you would be a tech entrepreneur? No, no. Fem- <laughs> fem- femtech. I didn't even femtech, know what femtech. That's it. I I didn't even know the word femtech probably until about six months ago. To be honest with you, um, no. I ha- I have learned an awful lot in the last however long, and um, it's been it's been it's been weird. Um, I've got more. I've got more to come. I've got other exciting things that I am hoping to work on, which I know I mentioned to you um, before we came on. Um, but in terms of that, no, I had no idea. And actually, I am grateful to the people that helped me uh, manage that, um, you know, because I literally just am like, help. Um, I think the scary thing is, it is just it is just me. Um, I, I'm fine enough. I'm doing something today where um, someone has come to help me. And it's like that. This is it. This is I am owning your menopause. I have obviously the lovely facilitators that come on and help me. And then the people that do manage the tech side. But sort of all the all the content, the blog posts, all of that sort of stuff, and you know, getting everyone together and putting it together, um, is is me, is driven by me. But it once you're there, once you've got the tech, it all works, it all works seemingly well. There are glitches every now and then. Um, you know, sometimes if you go live and something has gone wrong. Um Oh, that always it, happens in, in yeah, all the time. Even happens, in the best even are. in the best productions that happens. Well, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I know. So you know you can't but you just have to you just have to work with me. But it is it it has been extraordinary navigating this. Although do you know what's really weird? I ended up doing um for all the different reasons I you know wasn't the most studious child at school um I ended up doing a multimedia like degree and, because it was the only thing that I could stay in Manchester to do because I was up at Manchester and I didn't want to come home because my parents were getting divorced and so I was like, I got to do a course because um French and I was doing philosophy and um psychology and French and they didn't want me any longer for reasons I won't go into. Um, <laughs> I was like, how do I not go home? How do I stay? I did a multimedia course. So I, I was doing like HTML and coding and websites and all that sort of thing. And I was thinking, I'll just do that. But actually, weirdly, when I think about where I am now, that has actually helped me slightly understand some of the times, you know, if I have to do things on the website. So yeah, the world works in mysterious ways. Maybe I was definitely not meant to do psychology in French and I was definitely meant to do like multimedia. And like you've just said then, you know, managing all of that kind of, and managing the workouts, managing the children. I mean, you obviously have to prioritize kind of your time management and self-care as well. I mean, I mean, what, Obviously, I want to go into more kind of about owning your menopause, but what, what other than exercise, what are the other things that you look to to just protect your mental health? Mm, that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> ask, me, ask me next year. Um, no, I, do you know what? I think, and actually it's lovely, um, Simon um, Alexander um, 
said, if you really love your job, like you get the energy from what you're doing. And so I, I, okay, other than strength training, which I do find really, really beneficial, I do go to bed in good time and I go to bed early because I'm up early. So sleep, I try and ensure that I get my sleep. That's really fundamental. I eat really, really well and try and nourish my body, which I think really, really helps again. Um, I like doing cold water. Um, obviously, I don't do that every day, but that, you know, helps. Um, I, I don't really sit still. Uh, but in terms of protecting my own mental health, um, I think it is literally the strength training, eating well, getting my sleep and just really loving what I am doing. I don't feel that my mental health suffers. My boundaries, however, are terrible and I will be totally honest with that what I would love is as the brand continues to grow is to get more help because I am the one answering the emails the questions as you say putting the workouts together doing the workouts I have a lot of support and actually um, you know I'd say from the facilitators that come on and then lovely Katie who does all my nutrition um, she plays a massive role you know I talk a lot of things through with her um, and she's great but I guess that's it as well right is that I'm a talker so I don't I don't bottle things up and it may come out shouty it may come out in a tearful um you know moment where I'm like I can't do this anymore but I'll always get it out so I don't I don't harbor things and I don't I don't bottle I don't bottle it up so it, I nothing gets the opportunity to kind of eat away at me um but like yeah boundaries I need to work on I mean I'm often working until you know I'll pick um kids up from school at sort of five and then, you know, there's a sort of time with them, turn around with them, supper, bed. And then, you know, I might pick up again at seven o'clock and do a couple of hours before I go to bed. But I I don't, I, I just think as women, maybe like we're, we're really bad. I think, um, and that's a sweeping statement, but I think that we've always felt that pressure to deliver, right? Because, because we have to. Um, and you know, there's that everything you can have it all, but I, but like we, we can't. Things do, things do suffer. Um, I, yeah, I need to what I do need to work on. That. I think you know what I'm saying. Like, I think yeah. I'm not the only one that probably works. No, like absolutely that. not. You know, and and putting those boundaries up is really difficult. It is difficult, and and as you just said, then you know, so many women are guilty of of kind of trying to be everything all at once and sometimes you can manage it because you're enjoying it you know let's not you know if you're really enjoying it you you are invigorated and energized by it and you're like yeah 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 I can do it I can do it because you're getting so much back and you know again going back to the platform you've you've built this incredible community I mean just tell me a little bit more about the platform itself and what what you offer on there yeah, thank you. So no, so we have live workouts every day at 6.30 in the morning. I, um, apart from the weekends, so I do Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. Katie does a Wednesday, so Wednesday is not my, my rest day. Um, and then on Saturday, we have Pilates taken by somebody else and then face yoga on a Sunday taken by somebody else. Um, and then we have um, normal yoga on a Thursday um, and then mindfulness on a Tuesday. So I basically tried to create kind of the 360 holistic approach with all the um, disciplines that I think we should try and include in our workout week. Uh, we have uh, nutrition on there. So I have a nutritionist um, who does a live every Monday. Um, and then we do challenges and, you know, we support the women. We've just done a three week challenge, actually, you know, after Christmas. And they're not like challenges or restrictive things. They're about how do we add and um, try this, try that, guiding them. And then obviously we've got the community chat where they can come on and chat. And that is monitored 24 seven, maybe just not at night by myself. Um, and then we have a lovely doctor, a GP. We're actually getting another GP to come on because um, we want, I want, I want is for people, if they've got an issue uh, to have a reach out and to have a place so they can ask a question rather than you are number 15 in the queue, um, you know, and they're waiting and they're feeling frustrated and then they're at work. And then by the time they're number two in the queue, they need to go and do something. So trying to, trying to provide like a, a, a reach out point um, for, for that support, but more importantly, trying to get women to move and lift weights. So I really focus on um, lifting weights. We did a really tough session this morning. It was upper body, um, but literally saying to people, okay, you know, throw down the ones you've just been using and pick up 
another set a heavier set even if it's four reps you know even if it's two reps um and just really trying to encourage them to 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 believe in themselves and I think that actually weirdly you know lifting weights has that has the power to do that because you know a lot of people will pick up something and they'll be I can't do that or it even just anything in everyday life I can't do that or I don't have the time to do that or like and I and I really want every woman to challenge that negative thought every time she has one and just to try and push through with something because I think that's where growth can really happen and you know I'm a testament that 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 is possible I mean when I think about where I was four years ago and I don't say this with any sort of um you know, I, I have said this in the past um, that I, I actually wanted at one point to drive into a tree. Now, this wasn't to take my own life, but this was for just the world to stop. And I didn't know I didn't know how to have that rest. I didn't know how someone could listen to me without removing myself from it and go, look at what I'm doing. I'm doing all of this. Kind of it goes back to you, what you're saying about that mental health. I think probably that was my growing point and that is probably why I don't get there any longer I've kind of gone through where I was um but juggling so much and just you know and this is no disrespect to sort of I guess men but when they go away or when they go on holidays when they they literally just or when they go to work they just go and then they're gone you know and even now with the 17 and the 15 year old and the seven year old there's still a list of so and so's here, a match there. Pick them up here. This is in the this is in the fridge. This has got to be done. You are the CEO of the household. The CEO of the household. <laughs> but I can't then if I'm if I'm having you know if I pick the kids up and sort of having a nice chat at the school gate with a friend, you know we don't go oh should we go and have a drink or cup cup of coffee? No because we've got to get back because there's still a million things to do. Whereas you know your partner coming home from work might be able to meet up for a drink with somebody because there's no pressure to get home because everything's covered. So I, I yeah I think that um that that sort of that was my yeah that that was my worst um forgotten actually the answer to your question I see brain fog but I think that was my worst um time was was go, was going back there and um you know I want women to know that however low wherever you are that like you really have the power to transform this state this life stage and not only just transform it but do all the things that you never thought you could do but I I would never ever have imagined that that I would be here talking to lovely you today that that I would have had these opportunities that have come to me but equally really important to say on that like you will know I have created them this isn't something that has landed in my in my lap and I think that 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 is something that I don't necessarily give myself credit for sometimes um but I've worked really really hard to have that growth and I've worked really really hard to be in this position and as you said then you know and and you absolutely deserve all of the success that you're getting you know and 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 everything that you've achieved because as you said you have worked and the proof is in the pudding with you you've gone through it so what you're actually giving out is tried and tested you know the strength training and so many women I think can be very scared of strength training and weights and you know that it's a, a generation of that's been th- through the mire of diet culture and counting calories and you know teeny tiny bodies being the ideal and essentially we're going no you really you shouldn't do that you need to nourish your body with these great you know foods and pick up weights have you found that bit challenging trying to kind of change women's perceptions of how they need to look after their bodies yeah, do you know what I think I have, and I and I and I think the hardest thing with that has been that my and and, and again, this isn't about aesthetics because I I really do steer away from that. But like my whole body shape has changed as well. Like in terms of if I was to get on a scale, I don't. I'm probably heavier because I'm carrying more muscle, um, and you know. So so I think I think the thing I always say is I think what we have to do is go back like pre weights pre everything and go like at this life phase your body is going to change mostly and you know the genetics you know there are other things external factors that come into it but like I think we have to accept our changing body and um kind of go with you know with that I think as a good starting point because without doubt I have my body shape has changed um, I think for the better in terms of a because my mental strength is better. I am stronger as a person. 
Um, but I don't necessarily look like I did maybe 10 years ago when I was really exactly that tiny. So I think for some women, that is really hard to accept that with strength comes growth. That doesn't mean to say that you're putting on weight, but it means that your body becomes stronger and you may change shape slightly, but you're not bulking up. What you're doing internally is so much more important. So I think that part can be hard, but equally for women who do want to lose weight, strength training, and obviously people who want to maintain weight, you, you can, you know, you can get there. I think, I guess what I'm trying to say is that for me, I needed to probably gain a little bit of weight, gain a little bit of muscle to be strong. So that, that the transformation for some women might be really difficult. Um, but in terms of maintenance of weight or, um, you know, losing weight, you can achieve that with strength training. But to not make it about that, that is always a byproduct of what I do. Um, you know, that that doing the weightlifting is is good for. I mean, the list goes on and on and on and on. And I actually almost sometimes have to write it down and I've got it here. So we've got movement, metabolism, strength, balance bone health, hormone regulation, longevity, protein synthesis, insulin sensitivity, mental health, your overall muscle mass and your overall well-being. So we need muscle for all of that. So that for me is the focus. That's why I want women to really kind of reframe this, um, the narrative on you know how, how we look on the outside because none of that matters. It's what's going on on the inside. And, and again, brings me to the point you know like a, a six pack is not a sign of of strength and and being slim is not a sign of fitness you know and i think um i like to think we're getting there but i i i still sadly i think i think we were and for some reason i'm feeling like there's a slight step back um in that narrative i think i've seen more stuff recently on in media and on tiktok about the sort of you know i think it's I think well I had this conversation I I had this conversation actually on a previous podcast just recently of it's the whole nostalgia thing of the 90s and the early 2000s and what that aesthetic was so now because lots of people are going back to those images that's what's kind of filtering through all our social media and we're seeing images and I'm like please don't show me this this like you know this was traumatizing for me at 19 I don't want to see it again and it's influencing a whole generate younger generation of women but for the women that went through it it's like oh god no, low-rise jeans I don't want to do it don't yeah. make me do it I know. And I also think um, it's the sort of the food, the food thing as well, um, you know, is that sort of the no one knows how to eat anymore. Yeah. Um, you know, I think back in back in my day, it was just no carbs or, um, uh, you know, some of the maple syrup diet that people might have done. There wasn't really keto or fasting or juicing. Um, and now there is. And I, you know, it's funny, I've, I've been asked and asked quite a lot recently to do a a reel or a post or a story on intermittent fasting. And I'm not a, a like a, you know, I'm not a nutritionist. I I know a lot about nutrition. Um, but again, it's, it, we're always looking for something as a, to, to answer that. And, and all I can say is three lovely balanced meals a day. Like there is a room, there is room for fasting, but I think for women who have had d- disordered eating in the past or have a, a tendency to really get hooked up with numbers and things like that, it can be a really dark place to go. And, you know, we've got these, uh, the glucose monitors now, let's not get into that, um, that I don't think necessarily have a place again. Like I did a reel the other day about how I think it's really important we move our bodies because it feels good. We eat the food because it feels good and we know it's good. And if we're continually monitoring everything, oh my God, how miserable is that? Like, as, as I said to you earlier, I've not been on the scales for I don't know how long, don't care. I have not counted calories for I don't know how long, can't be bothered. Um, I used to worry about steps. I was like, okay, got to get my steps in. Now look, absolutely, we've got to get our steps in. And I know, and, and I don't want this to be dismissive, that for some people that can be a real driver. But equally, going outside for a half an hour walk, you're going to kind of get the right amount of steps, a nice, good power walk. And then like when I was running, 
I mean, I would go for a run and I'd be like, right, you know, you'd leave the house, Strava on, and then you'd see a friend, okay, and you'd stop your Strava. Oh, stop the Strava. Oh, God forbid the time doesn't allow. Yeah, yeah, I'm great. Yeah, I can't stop. I've got to go I'm again. I've got to press the button. I've got to go again. got to press the button. <laughs> and then off you go. And then I remember doing like a couple of marathons where I would cross the line and I'd forget to put the I'd be like, oh, damn it. It's going to say that I'd done that half marathon in five, you know, and those those things that you put on yourself can be so destructive in making your journey positive or letting you enjoy movement or exercise so now I literally I'm training for the Brighton marathon at the moment I'm just going to go out when I can and you know might run for an hour an hour and a half doesn't matter how long it took me um I did it and, and I went for a run on Saturday and I went out and I could hear this like rustling in the bushes and I stopped and then before I knew it like 40 deer came across, jumping over the fence. I obviously got my camera out, got my camera out, recorded it, you know, didn't stop the Strava. Whereas before, I would have just gone, oh, bloody dear, you know, waited for them to go. But I just paused and I had a moment and I could hear the birds singing. It was early in the morning and the world stopped and it was just lovely. It was just a really peaceful moment. And then off I went and, you know, my run was 10 minutes slower um you know so what I I had a exactly who are you competing with you're not competing with anybody and that's I think you you know you're trying to get out of that mindset of a competitive mindset and and I have to be the best or I have to get this time or and if you didn't get that time then you failed and that is just such a miserable place to be as you said before you know it's it's much better to kind of understand that this is a lifestyle It's a lifestyle that you're adopting. It's not a quick fix. And, you know, when you were talking about the the three balanced meals and food, and I know for myself, like, I never used to, to get this before when I was a lot younger. But now, if I don't eat, my, like, anxiety levels, my anger, I am so quick to lose my temper. You get hangry. Hangry. (laughs) I never used to, people used to talk about hunger, and I used to have no idea what that is because it never happened to me. But now I'm in my 40s, my Fred will say to me, you're a bit hungry, mum. And and I'll go, oh yeah, I've not eaten. And and I now understand so much more how important nutrition is and great foods and, you know, nuts and avocados and things that years ago I would have gone, oh, you can't have them, they're full of fat. And it's so crazy that, you know, but we need those fats to regulate our hormones and getting into that mindset and understanding that we're building a body to last us, you know, till the end of our days, hopefully. And that's important, isn't it? You've totally touched on that, you know, saying that these lifestyle changes and the lifestyle changes that we need to implement at this time, they do need to be for life. And that's why they have to be achievable and sustainable because, you know, our our body is a 365 day a year project. You know, we're not seasonal. Um, You know, we're not working out because we're going on a summer holiday or because we're going to a 50th or a a 40th. You know, no, that's, that's for like an hour of your life you know, for that moment, like work out because it feels good. You know, you're building that strong body. And actually, funny enough, I was doing a, another another reel to stick with the algorithms this morning. <laughs> uh, um, and I found a really good, um, a really good sound. And it was about, you know, your house being the best in town. And I've kind of relating that to sort of my body. It was, oh yeah, I think it goes something like, I want the best looking house in town. And so I don't want the best looking house in town. I want the house that's got the strongest foundations, you know, that's going to that's going to last and it's going to stand the test of time. And, you know, with that strong house, you can bring people into that strong house and offer them support and, you know, make your place nice and warm. You know, as in, you know, that 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 for me is, yeah, is sort of more more important. That was the kind of thing that this is. This is my long term house that I have to live in um, and I want to, you know, want to want to keep it strong. And that is such a beautiful analogy as well, you know, isn't it? Just like you said, you want to weather the storm. I mean, you think of how many storms we've had recently and things that have just been blowing away or whatever. You want yours to be the strongest and the fittest and fit for purpose and to last and to look at our bodies in that way. And particularly as we navigate this next phase, because, you know, it's like what we were saying earlier. There's a part of you that I suppose goes through a bit of grief when you kind of enter your perimenopausal years and you're like, okay, so I'm not that person. But I've come to this conclusion but we're ever evolving we're always evolving you know it's a new era a new time and you've talked before about reinvention and how this period of time now can be such an incredible time for reinvention and how you know you're doing things that you never imagined that you would be doing I mean writing a book as well and you know (laughs) building a brand and women I think 
need to feel empowered by this phase. Yes, it can be tricky, but at the same time, this reinvention is possible, isn't it? Yeah, totally. And it's interesting because I think obviously we're, we're recording this in January where there's been the conversations, new year, new you, all of those sorts of things. I think what's really important is that, yes, it's a new year, but like the new you, you are still there, but just use all of that past experience to keep driving yourself forward. Like I wouldn't be where I am without those experiences. So I don't want to ever say that, you know, they haven't helped carve out where I am but I draw on all of that to kind of create that momentum to go forward to go okay that wasn't something that I enjoyed or wanted to do it's still me but how do I make that better how do I reinvent that or how do I transform that and where do I go with that and I think once you have got a hold of you know your hormone health and you're able to manage that a little bit better through the lifestyle changes you make that's where your opportunity comes to go actually do you know what I'm not necessarily happy doing that I'm going to I'm going to change my job I'm going to change whatever I need I need to do and go and do that because you've still got a good 30 years in which you can action all of those things and I was at this talk earlier on in the week um last week and there's this lovely said, I want to do this but I just don't know if I can I've got this I was like what's stopping you what is stopping you and it was it was her it was her kind of confidence to do that nothing else was getting in her way and I said, you know, when when the time is right, you'll do it and you'll action it. And I think that equally is also the point. Like when the time is right, things happen. Um, you know, and, and you've mentioned we are that that society of sort of quick, you know, quick fix, or we want to just sort of for it all to just happen immediately. Um, and it doesn't, but I I equally don't want people to I just yeah, don't don't quit on that thought. Like um, there have been times where it's been really, really testing and you do think I can't do this. But again, change that that negative narrative towards yourself and try, at least try and go for it. And then slowly, slowly, you'll get stronger. You'll have more faith in yourself. You know, a lot of these women are coming, a lot of women are coming into this sort of part of their life from a really low point because they haven't understood what's happened many may have quit their jobs left their jobs because they had brain fog they didn't feel confident enough in the workplace you know so so they're coming at going and 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 you know I have to be so mindful of the conversations I have about thriving at this time because people are like well it might be you know it's easy for you because of this or it's easy for you because of this or because you've done it but none of it has been easy I just had to find my why like what was my why to push through and to keep going and that I guess is what everybody needs to do but it does bring us to that point about comparison is it's no good saying I've got here because it was easy for me because of this or easy for me because of that because that's only going to hinder you further you know your journey is your journey and only you can make those steps forward to improving it but you but you really can I think that take that risk I think is is kind of the thing that I want to say to people and stop worrying about what everybody else is is doing around you because if you're so busy focusing on everybody else you'll miss your opportunity you know you'll miss that that one thing that comes your way because you might because you'll be so busy worrying what she was doing or what What somebody else is doing and you know I I watched you earlier on another post of yours and and I loved it. And it it was kind of the working your way up through the weights and, you know, starting at around about three kilograms and then working your way up because that's, you know, something I think that people might look and go, oh, I'll never be able to lift that. But you've got to start somewhere and just starting by just a little bit, you know, whether it's once a week and then it becomes twice a week and then it becomes three times and then it might be you know a few minutes or it might be you know an extra rep just these tiny little things that eventually do become habits and eventually you look back and you go wow oh my gosh I can't believe I'm lifting this now and this is how strong and powerful I am the effect that that has on your mental health and self-worth as well and confidence so it's almost like you have to break things down you have to kind of look at it just one step at a time and eventually you will have walked a mile that's right isn't it Oh, my God, totally and it's totally that and again it brings us back to that point where the, you know the new year you set yourself a million things to achieve <laughs> all at the same time it's like wow and you wake up on that first bit, right, I've got to do this 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 and like you're exhausted by the time you get to point number 10 on your I've got to do this in January list so it's exactly that. choose one thing 
that you want to change and do that for a month, you know, adding the reps, doing the whatever. And then you've got that, then add that second thing, you know, and not after a month, but after two weeks and then add that third thing. But gradual, slow progress is always going to see you being able to commit and sustain and stay com- consistent. And I think that that is the other thing as well, sort of a lot of the, the time I'm asked about, you know, motivation and how and why Like, don't look for motivation. Motivation is not the driver. Motivation comes after you've committed and you're consistent because you can feel the change. And once you feel the change, you'll find the motivation so I think that that is everything we're we're often thinking I'm just going to go into it and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that but absolutely as you said that slow gradual progress that helps you feel strong you'll then you know you'll you, you then change your that sort of yeah that negative outlook towards um yeah that consistency and committing like that those are the two biggest things and then you'll get get the motivation to stick and just going back to what the, you know the the word that you've said before is acceptance you know in terms of exercise you're not always going to be able to do like the exercise that you did in your 20s and 30s i know now i can't run the way i used to run i used to really love running but my knees and my ankles i can just feel they're getting achy and i and i don't want to do myself any long term damage where i can't move at all because i love dancing i love doing my boxing and things i i really love exercising and i do it for my mental health but i've now got to a point where I realize trying to do long runs is just not good for me and it's not good for me in the long run so to speak yeah but um, <laughs> but and again coming to that place of acceptance and learning about new exercises that you can do that you will get results from whether you know whether that's for your management of, of weight or whatever or, or for, like for me when it's more of a mental health aspect and I like to to feel strong I like my endorphins running it helps keep my anxiety at bay that's really important isn't it to to again get to that place of acceptance yeah and and you know what this is I love I love that you brought this up because for me it's one of the questions that I'm asked quite a lot by potentially younger trainers you know what we and there are the conversations that people are jumping on a menopause bandwagon right so but I'm by me saying I'm a menopause fitness trainer or menopause exercise or menopause workouts. They're absolutely right. There is no such thing as like a menopause workout, right? It is a hook. It is a thing. What there is, it is the whole thing, as you've absolutely said. It is understanding how our body works at this time of life. It is, we will have a harder recovery period. It might be harder to recover from runs. We are more susceptible to injury. We are going to be likely to to have aches and pains. Our pelvic floor health does become potentially compromised, you know, so we are not going to be able to run like we could because of leakage or weak pelvic floors of all of those sorts of things. We are going to have time, more time constraints as we care for sick and elderly parents. Um, so it's all of those things that are really important. So how do we make our workouts effective for the time taking into account all of those factors. That's what it is about. We should all be lifting regardless of our age, but equally, if you still wanted to run a marathon, you could, right? But you would have to go about training for it differently because as you've just totally pointed out, your knees are not as good. I'm laughing slightly here because I am training for a marathon and I did a run yesterday, a 10K run, I like off-roading, full SAS run. And my knee today <laughs> is really, really sore. So therefore, I now know I'm going to probably have to rest for three or four days. Okay, just take a little bit of a moment. You know, I'll then assess it, Um, but just be kinder to myself. Um, But it's not going to stop me from doing the marathon. I just have to do it a different way. And I am I can be just as strong and as able, but I just need to do it differently Um, and kind of that takes me to the point that actually I did run a marathon in um, Oh God, I don't even know the year, not even going to go to the year, but I was 25. So that was a really long time ago. And I then ran the London Marathon for the hospice that looked after my dad. And they only asked me to do it six weeks before I got the spot. And they had been amazing at helping me care for him for the last three weeks of his life. So I was like, I have to do this. I have to do this. And I got the call in. So the marathon weirdly was an October marathon because it was the last London marathon sort of after lockdown. So yeah, it was last year, year before. 
And I got the call, yeah, to do it in August, just as I was going on holiday, summer holiday with the kids, hot country, you know, no facility really to train. So I was like, yeah, of course I'll do it. So I just carried on. I did long walks. I think I did like two, I don't know, 15K, 20K runs, no no more, and just kept up with my weight training. And I got the same time as I did 25 years, 25 years ago, 20 years ago, from pounding the pavement. Wow. Um, yeah and I hadn't set myself up to, to to beat it so just in case anyone does I got 345 when I was when I was there yeah, in 25 wow. and I got 345 when I was 47 um and obviously I'm doing the Brighton Marathon this side of town but I cannot like you I can't I won't be able to do the long runs because my knees won't allow it actually I don't have the time um but I'm gonna do exactly what I did for the last one and I'll do it I'll finish it um, I am hoping that I do it in a good time because I'm competitive. Um, but I just know that I have to train differently and do things differently. And that involves, without doubt, lifting weights for women who are navigating menopause and adding mobility as well. Really, really important. So, um, you know, in terms of all of that, yeah, I, I, I get that. And that's why I would love to see, you know, kind of in the PT world, menopause specifically being talked about in that course, because, you know, if you're there and you've got a woman who's sort of 42 and you're asking her to do some high knees and she looks really uncomfortable doing it and you're going, come on, get on with it, you know, and she's literally wetting herself. It's like, hang on a minute, you know, and, and, and it's just having the understanding and uh, uh, to, to know that, you know, that that's not going to happen. Um, and so I would... Because that can to... really put a lot of people off. Like that's yes. the thing is, you know, a lot of women feel frightened to go to the gym or they don't want to go out there and put themselves out there because it feels scary because they're going to get shouted at or they're not going to be able to do it. And you're so right. And it's it, basically, it's a lack of education all around, isn't it? As we said before, we've touched on it before about, you know, it's only recently that they've now kind of started talking about menopause in a more general general way. It was like, it, it's only a module that a doctor kind of, a GP had to elect to take. It wasn't part of the actual doctor's training, which to me, again, is mad. But I know that the NHS are putting things in place so that everybody has to do menopause training. And it's the same with, you know, fitness as well. The fact that when you did your course, there was a whole section missing. And, you know, that's going to change things for a lot of women because if they feel like they can go to a PT um and and be seen and be heard and you know their aches and pains aren't going to just be labeled as oh you can't do it or just a bit of this or a bit of that actually there's a deeper understanding there it will help many more women won't it yeah no totally and that's i've had so many women come to me saying that they've been diagnosed with fibromyalgia or you know all of these sorts of things and and look well whilst i'm sure for some women it is um you know a lot of it isn't it it can be the crippling joints and aches and pains that come with menopause so um you know in fact again i saw a lady on tuesday uh at this talk and she was like yeah but you know i'm doing hit every day but i'm just knackered i'm exhausted i don't i'm not getting the energy and i was like you've literally just answered your question, you're putting your body to adrenal fatigue, your cortisol high as a kite, no doubt, from doing HIT. You're totally stressing the body. So you're you you are fatigued, absolutely. So let's try and change that. Lift weights, you know. And that's the other thing that's really important. When we talk about that high cortisol level or stressing out, it doesn't mean don't do any exercise. It means just change the way you're exercising. We all need cortisol, you know, that's that that is a um, a hormone that that we need, um, but we just don't need too much of it. So it doesn't mean don't exercise, it means change your exercise. So, you know, that's so it's just those little things that we we need to learn. And you know, that gap in the in the market for the PT, I ended up doing three or four courses specifically around menopause training, um, that are available, but you know, they you have to go and find them um so I did because obviously I wanted to make sure that I was I was getting it getting it right I actually even did the doctor's training course that you're talking about the NHS course yeah I signed up for that so you are <laughs> medical <laughs> well I am now no I signed up for it as no qualification honestly and my husband's like what are you doing I was like but I need to know like no, I, absolutely. I, not necessarily to give women a prescription or to say but so that I can say the reason you're feeling like this is because your hormones are declining it's the da, da, da. because you know some women want to know some don't they just want to know how do I stop how do I solve it um but for me it, it was important to try and have that medical knowledge and and now obviously you've popped 
put so much of it into the book, your brilliant book, which is doing so fantastically well. There it is, <laughs> Fitter, Calmer, Stronger in 30 Days from Owning Your Menopause. Um, yes. You know, just the book itself, I suppose it's, it's kind of like a toolkit for women. And, you know, just tell me about your experience of putting it together. Like, what? how was it for you? Yeah, <laughs> it was manic. Uh, no, it wasn't. Do you know what? I had everything there that I wanted to put into. I wanted to do this for a really long time. You know, the posts I do, the reels I make, it's kind of all all now in in one in one place right so it starts off brief bit of my journey or why I'm here and how and then we kind of just go straight into it so you know we talk about um you know what is menopause um symptoms so it's basically everything everyone needs to know but I think the thing I like about it and it's been described as like having a com like we are having a conversation with your best friend who gets it who knows it like it's not your in-depth medical bible um that goes into you know the real intrinsic ins and outs you can read it in a day two days i've had people go wow i power through that and now i'm doing the plan um and that's what i wanted it to be because i know how time poor people are um you know and the thought sometimes of reading a book can be really daunting um but the exciting thing is is that you read the book and then somewhere in the middle there's a QR code and you scan the QR code. It takes you out the book to a platform where there are two 30 day follow along on demand workouts. So you got day one, day two, literally. And I recorded every single one um, from just in one go. There's no editing. I fell over in one and then I was like, should I re-edit that? And I was like, no, 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 no. Got to keep it real. Uh, did it in the did it in the laundry room. That sounds dodgy. Uh, recorded them all in the laundry room, not in a gym because I wanted the workouts to be able to be done from home. Um, in all honesty, I when I when I set about this with our publishers and I was like, yeah, we'll do three, we'll do two courses. I hadn't then realized it would be recording 60 workouts, um, but it's worked. And there are people, you know, that are getting up. They've stuck to the 30 day plan. There's an eating plan. But that that was what I wanted. I wanted people to have that handheld experience, um, you know, from the book. So they've got the knowledge. They feel supported. They feel empowered. They're ready to thrive. And then they put it into action. And and that was that was what I wanted the book to be. And how does it feel for you now? I mean, just think about it. Like when you go back like four years ago, when you when you fast forward to where you're at now and you have people actually, you know, going onto your platform and doing your workouts and talking online together and you've built this community. How does that feel for you? It feels really amazing. I do get quite emotional about it. No, it feels amazing because it is helping a lot of people. But I'm really bad. I don't think I ever stop and go wow because I'm always just thinking like what can I do to help more like what's next where do I go like I'm I think that is I mean that's an I think that's an ADHD uh trait which I which I have it's like what's next um and it does feel really surreal because I don't think I ever ever set myself up to be like this like this person so like when I went and did that talk I was talking about I was so nervous like I'm not a public speaker by 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 experience at all I am so out of my comfort zone so like every time I go and do a talk and people might think wow let me tell you it has taken me a lot to get there high anxiety I'm I'm not that public public persona but I know that that's the only way that I can make a difference so I'm willing to to be vulnerable and put myself there and I probably haven't actually just stopped and given myself a pat on the back for it yet because it has been a bit of a whirlwind I'm sure that moment will come um but I just I think I just feel proud of what it's doing but I feel like I'm just like every woman out there too so I don't sort of set myself apart from everybody if that but you're everybody's friend sense. and can we just take yeah. a t- take a minute and just do it now just pat yeah, yourself on the go. back please thank you very yeah. much I'm going to give you a clap <laughs> because you know you are acting as everyone's friend in the sense that you are holding their hand it's a very tricky time to navigate it's a scary time to navigate and you know actually laying it out in the way that you have done which is follow me 
you know, I can help you. You've absolutely clued yourself up in all aspects. So, so, you know, we know that you're a trusted source. So you're giving people the best information and holding their hands through it. And that's incredible. And honestly, it's, it's so brilliant to see and so fantastic. And, you know, I know you mentioned earlier about some other projects. So just tell me what you, what your ideas are for, for next and for bigger and for, for more people. <laughs> yeah. Well, book number two, maybe watch this space that would be fun um i am i am i've got a podcast coming Yay. out very soon um and i'm trying to think what else i've got obviously the marathon in terms of like physical challenges um but yeah more writing um podcasts and then we'll see what's next you need to do an event Oh, yes, you talk. do. I'm just going to throw that out there to you. You have to do an event. <laughs> okay. Yeah, maybe it'd be one so thing. good. It would we'll be good. We'll collaborate on something as well at, at some point first. Something. Yeah. Yes, definitely. <laughs> and just very quickly before uh, we have to kind of wrap up, if you had to choose one self care product that you absolutely love and would always reach for, what is it? Oh, my goodness. Me. Now, there's a question. I think my let me think my self-care product okay would have to be a face cream um if I'm allowed to use that because I'm really bad okay at that do you have a particular brand so I love to use I do not I'm sat on the fence because I'm using two at the moment so I will go with two that I'm trying one that I've been using a lot is a as a balance me the tripeptide uh plumping fluffy powder cream which I've loved but there's a new one on the block um by I think it is we are made um and I'm loving their in fact it's a different one is their cleanser so for me it's that kind of going to bed get get me I don't really wear makeup but if I do or actually just kind of you know rubbing off the day like that for me is a moment it's got the most amazing cleansing balm um and that is a that is a new one out there um that I am trying at the moment and I'm loving but for me like that those would be my self-care products um other than that I'm really bad at, at, at all that sort of stuff I just like to um a pair of weights pair of weights yeah but this is good no it is absolutely fantastic I mean we have run out of time for today but thank you so much for being with me honestly you've been absolutely brilliant and so knowledgeable and informative as well thank you so much Amy. it's always gorgeous to talk to you and I hope to catch up with you again very very soon definitely 100% Um, for more from Kate you can follow her on Instagram at katerh underscore fitness or visit her website www.owningyourmenopause.com Kate's brilliant book Owning Your Menopause Fitter, Calmer, Stronger in 30 Days is also available online and in all good bookshops there it is just hold it up again for me there it is for more well-being and lifestyle you can visit us at our website www.thecatchful.co.uk where you can also catch up with our previous podcast episodes by streaming from any of our podcast channels and youtube as always feel free to leave your rates and reviews i love hearing from you it's been lovely to hear from you so far so thank you for that you can also drop us a message at instagram at official capsule if you'd like to put any questions to our future guests or leave a message about any of our previous episodes i will be back next week with another very special guest but all that's left to say today is goodbye so it's goodbye from kate goodbye Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. And goodbye from me. Bye-bye.